Hi guys, good morning. Dr. Levine here. I am interviewing Paul Wichigerst, one of the co-founders of Fatburn. Uh, I keep talking about this gym because it's one of my favorite places to come. Um, they've helped me in my journey uh, towards getting my weight goals and to be stronger as I get older and healthier. So, um, welcome and so excited to speak with Paul. guys, Dr. Levine here, and uh, I already spoke to you about Paul Wintergross. He is co-founder of uh, Fatburn here at White Plains. I've done already a couple of videos on Fatburn, and I'm so excited to talk to Paul. Thank you. Look at this handsome guy. Uh -huh. Nice to be here. Thank, Thank you very much. So, Paul, tell me, yesterday I met with Sean, and I had a great meeting. We talked a lot about health and um, fitness. So, um, like, I would have to thank Fatburn for putting me on a, a journey to healthy living. I mean, I'm not perfect by any means, and you guys are so inspiring with the motivation that you um, give your members. But um, so, like, I have a tagline now. So I just want. So my tagline, the trailer of my life, the tagline is, I just want to be a sexy old broad. That's my tagline. <laughs> a sexy old broad. Yes. Because I'm, no, because I was. S O B. Right. Because I was a dork all my life, so now my goal is to be sexy as I get older. Mm -hmm. But, um, so, so you're what's your tagline? Yet? I'm I'm working on it. I'm working <laughs> gotcha. on it. <laughs> we can say you're already there. Uh, well, yeah, but yeah, I'm, I, I don't feel it I yet. I like but, that better. But thank you. So what's your tagline? For myself or for our for, business? For, I feel like as a business owner, you become so entrenched in your business. You can tell me whatever, personal tagline or your business tagline. So our business tagline is really just the most convenient way to lose fat all under one roof with a trainer, nutrition coach, and a chef, right? So that's what we do at Fat Burn. I really don't have a personal tagline. I mean, if I had to think of a personal tagline. Think of one. I like, I really like um, just being able to have the freedom to do what you love every single day. So if I had time, I could probably put that into a better sounding sentence. But I just believe that, you know, in order to be happy, you know, most people wake up and do their job uh, for the majority of their life. You spend more time at your job than you do with your family, if you really look at the hours, Very right? Mm -hmm. So just being happy, doing what you do every single day, um, I guess would be my tagline. Something to that effect. That's nice. Yeah. You're, you're a good man, Charlie Brown. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're a pull Okay. Right. So, Paul, um, I want to talk, I, I, as I have already said to Paul, I wanted to talk about not only his healthy lifestyle, but... Um, his journey as an entrepreneur, because that's all interesting to me because I have a business and, you know, I want to learn from other people. But um, tell me, like, a close to perfect day for you in terms of eating and exercise. Like, what is, like, when you're in beast mode, that's what I'm calling it. Yeah. A perfect day for me just in terms of exercise or and, in terms of my meals. entire day? Meals, entire day, your morning rituals. What makes Paul Paul? Yeah, so a perfect day for me is, it starts with what I was saying, and by the way, our business tagline is we feed you, we train you, we school you, just to right. say that in a short way. I like it, like it. Can yeah. you say that again? We feed you, we train you, we school you. That's yeah. your tagline right there. Friend does. So my perfect day is being able to wake up, I wake up early anyway, I wake up at 6 a.m., but not having to wake up and rush to a job, to a train, I used to work in the city for 10 years. You know, just the feeling of like waking up, running to the shower, running to the train, walking as fast as you can. I hate that rushed feeling in the morning. So my morning rituals are I wake up at 6 a.m. and from 6 to 8 a.m. I read, I journal, I meditate for 20 minutes, and I get ready in wow. a relaxed fashion. So wait, you journal, you meditate, and... I read 10 pages every day of whatever book I'm reading. That's amazing. This way I force myself, because most books say if they're 200 and 300 pages, if you read 10 pages a day, you read a book a month. So all you need to do is read 10 pages a day. I'm going to start reading books now again. That's one. I also listen to books at, in the car on Audible, so that's a great way to read two books a month. Right. Listen to one, read one. That's so cool. One thing I would say about Paul is that Paul is like a person that whenever you meet him, I feel like he's always on. Paul, Paul is on, right? <laughs> on something? No, 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 no he's not on like, Yeah. Yes, he's it, always, he's, you could see, you know, like, I, without him opening his mouth, I know he's a first child. Mm -hmm. I could just 
because um, Andrew, I've done a, a video with Andrew, his, his younger brother, and you can see Andrew's the baby and Paul's the oldest. You can definitely see that. You've got very much that um, the older sibling thing going on for you. Gotcha. So, um... Well, I didn't finish answering your I'm question. Sorry. So that's my morning ritual. You know, then I go about my day working, and mm. I, you know, I work a lot of hours. I put a lot into this business, which is why I love every day what I'm doing. But then I always have a one... Not at the moment, I just had back surgery. So for the past four months, I haven't been able to do this, yeah. the workout part. But I would always have a one hour workout five days a week. Okay. And if I'm on my A game, I'm eating four fat burn approved meals every single day. Yeah. And during my life, I do that Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, I eat whatever I want. If I'm going through an intense goal setting time, then I'll also eat those meals on the weekends as well. So it's basically waking up relaxed, you know, having my work day, which is what I love to do anyway, having a one hour workout and eating four healthy meals every day keeps me in, in the shape that I want to be in. That's great. These are some, how did you come up with the concept of fat burn? Like how did that, what were the seedlings to that? Yep. Yeah, so I didn't come up with it. We just took uh, the idea and Sean is heavily responsible for the way we came up with it. I was working in finance for a hedge fund, working a huge amount of hours. Sean was going through an infomercial for Insanity, if you know Sean T on TV. So Sean used to work out with Sean T okay. in Rockefeller Center mm -hmm. to get ready. He was in one of their infomercials for Insanity. So while he was working out with a group of people with Sean T in Rockefeller Center in New York, behind the scenes, they also had a nutrition coach, Jessica, if you remember. I do. Uh -huh. Yeah, was their nutrition coach. And... Um, they had a company in New Rochelle catering their meals. Okay. So Jessica would coordinate the meals, they would deliver the meals to the studio, they would all work out together, and it was gonna guarantee that all these people were gonna have unbelievable before and afters, and um, guarantee the result by the time they had to. So, you know, being in fitness, uh, not being in fitness, but always li living and living a fitness lifestyle, I should say, I love that concept, and yeah. it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So that's what, brought upon the idea for fat burn, and, and then we started it that way. That's really interesting. So when was this? This how many years ago? It was in 2011. Okay. That was in, Sean was probably going through that in the summer of 2011. Okay. We ran into Sean in a pizzeria, my, my ex-business partner and I. We oh. ran into Sean and he told us what he was doing, and mm -hmm. that's how the conversation started. That's super cool. Yeah. So you guys uh, started in 2011. Okay. Well, we, we started really in 2012. We did a pilot program in 2011 before like Fatburn even had a name or it was anything. We yeah. just kind of started it on oh, our own. That's super just, cool. Just to do it. And when did this location open? Uh, the White Plains location opened in the summer of 2014. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think I joined 20, uh, July of 2015. Well, so maybe it was two, 2015, am I wrong? No, I think I think you opened in 2014. Maybe. Yeah, I think it was 2014. I've been coming here for a year and a half, so, yeah. yeah. So, but that's great, because, I mean, they opened a second location in Connecticut, like, what, a year ago now? or uh, like In August, we opened in Connecticut. We're planning to open in New York City in November. Woo-hoo! Yeah. Congrats, that's, that's some good off. news. Yeah, we'll see. Wow, so see, that's impressive, like, how you can do that. Um... So, I'm going to ask you some business questions. So, so the mission. The mission is... The mission or our purpose is what I was saying before, which is the most convenient way to lose fat, uh, having your training and nutrition coaching and your meals prepared for you all under one roof. Yeah. Which so I feel is the part that gets in the way of a lot of people, just being so inconvenient to do all the things you need to do. Yeah. A lot of people just go to the gym, you need to have the right nutrition, and you need to have the time to cook it. Yeah. So we're trying to make it that all easily accessible. Yeah, that's super. It's yeah, it's great because um the food is cooked right here at the Aaron Tomato, which mm -hmm. is a restaurant right downstairs. The chefs are um down there, they prepare the food uh, yeah. daily. Yeah, our chef prepares the food separate from Iron Tomatoes menu. Okay. You know, we use low salt, low sodium, low sugar. Mm -hmm. our, our ingredients uh, and recipes are different. Yeah. We prepare it twice a week. Right. So people pick up the food twice a week for two or three days and then you go on like that. It's, it's really a great thing. We were talking about meal prep and all. I am really bad about meal prep. So for somebody like me, that's a great option to be able to get healthily prepared food conveniently at the mm -hmm. location I work out at. 
And I did. I, I used to order food. I, I, I need to get back into it. <laughs> well, we changed it now so you can order by the meal. Okay. So if you like to order, meal prep some of your meals and just get like a dinner, mm -hmm. you can do that now as well. It used to be you have to order the whole day. It's probably how you did it. Right, right. And now you can do it meal by meal. Well, that's really cool, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I'll be providing the information for um, the links and stuff um, in my... Um, so what, in your description? The comment yes. section? I'm going to delete that. Yes, I'll be providing the links and contact information in my comment section. Okay. So, um, so how do you guys advertise for your business? Uh, we advertise primarily through Facebook. So we run a lot of Facebook ads. Social um, media. Social media, but not just making posts on our walls. We actually advertise on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So we put out, you know, a post and then we'll promote it over the entire uh, month and we switch it up like that. You know, we do, we blog. Um, we have some YouTube videos. Uh, we have email blasts that go out. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of networking events and booths. Like yeah. we're doing a fashion show in March. Um, we're going to do a workshop coming up. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. The Fat Burn Open. Yes. You know, yes. Those are all different ways that we yeah. do it. So the thing about Fat Burn, which is really cool, is that it's a community. I mean, like all these people on the wall, I probably know like 75% of them. Mm -hmm. And they all continue to come here. The majority. Denise is a trainer now. I know. Yeah, she's just starting. Oh, well, yep. It's it's so cool. So these <clears throat> these are before and afters, and um, the people who come here, they stay here. Mm -hmm. I love well, that's you guys. That's not that's not not anything we're doing for for whatever reason. The family like environment is just you guys showing up here every day and putting in the hard work and using the tools that we're giving you. It's all you. Yeah. So all the success you've had, I love seeing that because. It's, you know, it's gratifying for you to actually use what we're putting forth and then to see you have great results and become an SOB. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, no, but I'm, I'm just really, really happy to be a part of this community. So, um, what do you attribute to your success? I mean, like you're opening a third location. Yeah. Um, there's one line that Steve Jobs always says in like one of his famous interviews and he's like, you know, not a lot of people do it because it's really hard, right? It's actually really hard to own your own business. Absolutely. It's, like, it's something that coming from finance, I thought I worked a lot of hours and thought and you know was stressed out. So I thought coming into this life was going to be a stress release or a stress reliever. But you know, it's a ton of work, it's a ton of hours in the beginning. And if you don't love what you do and you don't do it for a, a higher reason, then you're just gonna phase out. And I think that's why so many small businesses end up not working because um, but there's two reasons. One is the amount of work it takes. And then second, most people get into small business because you're good at something, right? But then when you're good at something, so I'm good at fitness and getting people into great shape, but that doesn't matter when you open a business. Because mm -hmm. as soon as you become a business, you have to know how to market your business. Yes. Word of mouth is not going to get you where you want to be, especially opening up new locations and growing at a rapid pace. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So no matter what it is, if you make the best cupcakes in the world, as soon as you open up a business, you now are the best cupcake maker in the world with no marketing experience. So nobody knows you make the best cupcakes. Right, right. So it's those two things. It's um, a combination of getting the marketing right and also just working at your ass off in the beginning until things mm. things get moving. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I find as a business owner, one of the most trying things is dealing with different personality types, mm -hmm. employees. So, um, what do you look for in an employee? Yeah, that's a great question. So in the beginning when we were hiring, we always used to hire people based on the skill. You need a person to do this job. Can you do this skill? Great, you're hired. And we found that a lot of those people would stay here for a little while and then leave. Um, and I read a book called Who, which I recommend to you. It's awesome. Okay. Um, and it's, they have something called the skill will bullseye, right? So if somebody has the will or they want to be in fat burn or they fit into our culture, that's somebody who's going to stick here, right? The skill is something that can be taught. Yeah. So to answer your question, now we look to hire people who fit in culturally here first, okay. first and foremost. And then the skill is obviously important. But even if somebody doesn't have the skill, we'll hire them because they're such a good fit and teach them the skills that they need to succeed here. Okay. Yeah, so for that reason now, we actually put people through Fatburn for three weeks before they even get hired, just mm -hmm. to make sure this is something, that, someplace they want to be. It's been great for our trainers, because mm -hmm. trainers come in here and they say they're all great and want to train here. And we found that 80% of them don't even make it through three weeks of fat and they just phase themselves out. Wow. So it's, uh, it's been a great screening process to uh, ingrain them in the culture right away. 
<clears throat> yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. No, I never actually thought of that, but uh, that's interesting. So it's been working for you. Yeah, so that in kind, and that actually was Sean Smith's suggestion, is putting people through a 21 day kickstart here. That was his idea, and that book, Who. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the author, but mm -hmm. that's an unbelievable book to read for the hiring process, doing it the right way. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So for all business owners, Who? For the hiring process, because that's the, I so, feel that's the most trying part of having a business. Yeah, that book was given to me as a gift by the CEO of a firm called NPE, which is in the Fortune Top 500. Um, which is why it was probably such a great read and a great uh, recommendation. Yeah. So, um, so what made you choose uh, the locations you did? Like, what was, what were you looking for in the ideal location? Be it here in White Plains or in Stanford? Yeah. So, when we were starting off, I really needed a cheap rent. We didn't have much money, to be right. honest with you. But Fatburn is different than a gym. So this is not the kind of. There's actually people who come here from 45 minutes away, yeah. Rockland. So you're coming here to get a result in a certain amount of time. So for that reason, I wasn't really concerned about being on the ground level because we're on the second floor. Um, but I do like the idea of being in a highly populated area that yeah. you can still be seen. Iron Tomato right below us has a ton of traffic. Yes. Right? Yes. So us being right above them, mm -hmm. forget the fact that our kitchen is right there. We get so many people just walking by here from that. Right. Um, so those kind of two things, and we have the same exact scenario in Stanford. Yeah. We're on the corner of what I think is the busiest intersection in Stanford, above a McDonald's. I mean, the, and there's a Starbucks across the street. So if you want a little hint, I actually think positioning yourself next to a Starbucks or any kind of business that has a ton of foot traffic already, just by all those people going there, they're gonna see your business next to it. And mm -hmm. that's something that plays into when I'm looking for a, a, um, a spot. Yeah. The location is so important when it comes to establishing your business. Where's the place in the city? Have you found a location yet? Yeah, so similarly in the city, we have not, but the place that I wanted to was above one of the old Grace Papaya. So it's funny how our fitness studios are all about Always, like yeah. food establishments that are not healthy, but Grace Papaya has huge foot traffic. Yeah, yeah. So what, which which Grace side. Papaya? The they, Lower East Side? Yeah, they, no, Lower West Side. They oh. closed it now. The Lower West Side, I don't know exactly yeah. where you're and the place that we wanted actually became a bar studio now. But we are looking for space. Um, I have two friends who work for Corcoran, and they're looking for spots. Wow, that's yeah. super, super cool. So, um, what are your goals with Fatburn? I think we've probably already addressed them. You know, it's the exercise, the motivation, and the food. The goals for Fatburn as a business are for what we want our people to achieve. Well, let's talk about what your goals are as a business. Yeah, uh, our goal for Fatburn as a business is to open up as many locations as we can. So there's two ways you can go. You know, there's the franchise model, which I actually don't really think I want to go towards. Uh, and then there's opening up as many privately held Fatburns as you can and then having some cool conversations about, you know, if you were, really want to get 10 years out going public or something like that. That's like my big area audacious goal. They call it, I think, BHAG is the acronym for that. But I don't know. Right now, I'm just happy opening new locations, teaching a team of people to lead them, and seeing them work this system and have our members get unbelievable results and form their own families, like you said, in each community. It's just really gratifying to watch. Yeah. Yeah, that's the business, uh, I guess. Answer. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so, now in, White, in the White Plains area, there are tons of gyms. Mm -hmm. And um, what is it about Fatburn that makes it different from the other gyms? Yeah, well, the immediate difference is we serve food, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a, a structured nu a nutrition system. Yeah. Um, in a lot of gyms, you might have a nutrition person who will walk in and kind of like haphazardly give you a meal plan. Um, I believe ours is a lot more structured than a gym. We track you very often. Mm -hmm. um, we, I think we give pretty good support here. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, you know, just the food will save you all the time that you need to actually get the result when you want. And yep. then we have different cool things like the challenge you just went through yep. um, to try to keep it interesting. Yeah. Also, our workouts change, sorry. Yes. Every two weeks. That's yes. another big thing that's, you know, a little different than a gym. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I think one of the biggest things with Fatburn is the the fact that the trainers and Paul um, are so committed to motivating everyone. I mean, they're constantly on Facebook with the videos, um, with these uh, motivational type activities like the challenge, and uh, you have so many things going on. So one of the doctors I work with, she did the 21 day challenge. She lives really far from here, but um, she, I feel like, hit it right on the head when she said, the big thing with them is that 
people are attracted to the motivation. Yeah, that, motivation and accountability. Y- that. Right. Yeah, and uh, and you guys are so like involved like, with the constant videos and stuff. It's not. I don't feel like you've been treated like a business because you're you're constantly on it. It's funny because I actually don't even realize that we do it that often. Yeah. And then sometimes there'll be days where I think I'm actually posting too much. So I really don't know. It, you know what it is? Oh, I don't think you're posting too much. But it's, it's a, but it's a big deal. Like you guys are like doing the research on it, you know, presenting it constantly. It's a lot of work. Yeah, well, it's actually less work if you walk the walk, right? So to go back to your question <laughs> about people we hire, one of our values is also walking the walk. So there's mm-hmm. nobody here who doesn't live this lifestyle, and that's what makes it easy, because I do these challenges with you guys, right? I do these programs with you, so it's so easy for me to just sit there and post how I'm feeling and the struggles I'm going through. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm like, everybody do a challenge, and I'm over here working on Excel spreadsheets, right? Mm -hmm. And then I have to think of like, who's up the post? It just happens naturally, because we're doing it with you. So that's that's what that is attributed to. Yeah, so, um, okay, so now, if you had one piece of advice for starting out, let's do for starting out a business and one piece of advice if you're starting on your health journey. What would be a piece of advice if you're starting your health journey? If you're starting your health journey, um, you should track what you're doing because everybody starting out on a health journey gets really motivated, they get really excited, they go 100 miles an hour for the first two weeks and then they fizzle out and stop. They take two or three months off until they feel horrible and then they start the whole thing over. They get, they pick a day, they get 100 miles an hour for two, maybe three weeks this time, and then that cycle just keeps going on and on. You need, I shouldn't say need, you should commit to a plan that you know you can do for more than two or three weeks and then track yourself. Because even if you do stop, by tracking yourself, you'll know, you can't lie with the results, right? So if you track yourself, you'll see this is the result I got, even if it was I like gained weight. Instead of saying, I work out and I was eating this way, it didn't work for me. The reality is you worked out, you ate this way, you gained two pounds, right? So then when you start the next time, you have somebody compared towards what you did, right? So even if it's just starting as the number of times you work out in a week and then totaling that for a month, the number of times you drink in a month and putting that on a calendar, the amount of healthy meals you actually eat in a day, start with something like that, it's gonna really open your eyes as to what you're actually doing versus what you think you were doing. Mm -hmm. So that's my answer to that. And tracking into whatever diet or or fitness regimen you're gonna start. So we had gotten these awesome little journals. Um, We talked about, I talked about this yesterday with Sean about the importance of having a food log, right? Yes. Is that how you're tracking, is that what you're talking about tracking? I wanna make it even simpler. So Mm -hmm. a food log and and writing down every single thing that you're eating, Mm -hmm. it also causes a lot of people to stop because that's a very annoying process. I'm just talking about if you're supposed to eat four healthy meals, just writing down I I eat a healthy meal, healthy meal, healthy meal, and then at the end of the day, I eat four healthy meals, and seeing exactly how many healthy meals you actually eat. Mm -hmm. That a more simpler form of food logging, but like we did in the challenge. Yeah, yeah. What um, what uh, I like my fitness pal. What apps do you like uh, for Um, tracking? We were using Eat Simple to track that, but if you want to track your exact food, I used to use um, not my fitness pal, the other one. I forget the name. Is it called Let's Go? Something I forget. I the think name of Sean, it. Sean said it to me yesterday, and it just uh, I'll um, I'll ask him again. True, something I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it's slipping my mind now, but I'll email it to you so you can post it in the comments. Yeah, it's like this worry, famous I'll, I'll, fitness pal. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll edit out whatever mm-hmm. this little thing is. Um, and uh, what about what's your uh, advice for somebody who's starting out on a business? <laughs> a business is a business, right? Whether it's a medical business, uh, um, a studio. Yeah. What, what would be your uh, piece of advice to someone who's starting out? Yeah, don't concentrate so much on, let's go back to the analogy of cupcakes. Don't concentrate so much on you're making a perfect cupcake and making everything perfect in your business because you have no one there to buy that, right? So as soon as you start a business, just realize that you are now a marketer. It's the other half of your business. And I would start... Take note, lovely marketing. Yeah, and I would start literally concentrating on that first more than even what your product is. Because everybody's like, I have the best product, and they just want to show everybody their product. Yeah. And then they show all their friends and their family and word of mouth a little bit, and then it just stops right there, right? So you have to 
You have to concentrate on either getting a consultant to help you with marketing, a coach, you need to read marketing books, and you need to try marketing activities because you're not gonna get it right away. You have to try and fail in a marketing direction rather than making the best product ever and then sitting there trying to figure out how to sell it after the fact. Mm -hmm. So marketing right away when you start. Okay. That's my advice. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so um, am I allowed to share some of your personal business? Sure, well, yeah. yeah. So, because I'm like a, a nosy nilly, Paul is going through a very exciting uh, time of his life. I didn't know what you meant by that, but now yes. I So he's, two whammies, he's engaged, yeah. and he's going to be a dad. Yeah. Yeah. High five. Yeah. It's a Got boy, a good swimmer the there, good swimmer. Yeah. Anyway, so it's a boy. Yes, what an you. exciting time of life. I appreciate that. Thank that you. is... It is such an optimistic and fun time. It's a great time. Enjoy it a lot. Thank you. Um, so what's the plan for V-Day? Um, for V-Day, so I woke up this morning. I gave Andrea roses, chocolate, and a car. She forgot. She thought Valentine's Day was the 15th. Okay. But, <laughs> but she, um, she works also. She's an interior designer, so she works till 5. And then she has class tonight from six to nine. So we're gonna set, we're gonna go out to dinner on Saturday night. Nice. Yeah. And well, I was working today. Congrats on all the great stuff in your life. Thank um, you. It to, oh, I don't get to see you that often, but mm -hmm. I do love being a part of this community. I want to thank, thank you. I appreciate for making that. it. Yeah, thank you. And um, thanks, guys. This is Paul Wintergers from Fatburn. Um, have a great day. Thank you. It was fun. Thanks, lovely.